Hello everyone, we're doing something a little different for the channel. I'm gonna combine my love of Dark Souls and challenge runs together with my first Dark Souls challenge run. We'll be playing the Prepare to Die edition and we're gonna be doing a naked fist, fist weapon only run today. Now let's talk about the rules and conditions of the challenge. One, no glitches to skip areas as we don't want to skip any bosses. Rule number two, every single boss must be killed to count as a win. Fist type weapons are the only tools allowed for combat. This gives us access to five weapons total. The fist, claws, Sastus, dark hand, and dragon bone fist. We could also make an exception for the pyromancer's flame, but I'm probably not going to allow it. Two of which we cannot obtain for a long time, however. Four, no armor is allowed at all. However, a small shield is allowed in the offhand, the function for parrying purposes, but no blocking. And eventually, I just discard this because I find out the fist is just as good as parrying. Rings are also fair game, as well as the dragon torso stone. That being said, we're likely to not go for the torso stone due to the sheer amount of grinding it would take to get that thing for the dragon covenant. That being said, if you can get to rank 2 of the torso stone and farm 30 scales, your base fist goes from 20 damage to 400. But good luck getting the scales you need, because you have to either invade, which depending on if the servers are back or not, or you'll have to farm wyverns, which have a 5% chance, and with your bare fists that deal about 2 damage a hit after resistances, plus good luck killing any players barehanded. Now let's begin this journey with what may be the absolute hardest part, the Asylum. First off, we do our soul's tradition of making a god-awful character as ugly as we can. I mean, just look at this ugly abomination, and it's only gonna get worse once you see that face in hollow form. Soulless beef jerky, here we come. Now for this run, I'm taking the thief class for several reasons. One, master key is always valuable. It opens so many doors that it's going to be quite helpful for pulling off of what we need to do early and out of order. Two, the target shield's a nice benefit for parrying, though as I said, we discard this. The thief automatically gets the master key for free, which frees up our gift slot for a twin humanities or some other benefit like the old witch's ring. That twin ends up coming in clutch soon. Now once we've gone through the usual intro and gotten into the game, it's time to come to the first and most likely hardest challenge we'll face for a long while. I bet you didn't expect the Asylum Demon to be a legit threat, let alone a several hour hurdle, did ya? Well, let me tell you why this boss was such fun time for us. First off, I wanted extra bragging rights, so I didn't allow myself to run through the rest of the asylum for the Estus Flask and to get the drop attack on him. That's right, I beat this fucker completely naked, barehanded, and with only one heal in the tank I couldn't afford to use unless I was absolutely sure this was going to be the run. It took over two and a half hours, and let me tell you, there's only three things on my mind. One, thank god this boss's music is dope. Two, this fucker has more cake than an entire goddamn bakery. I mean, just look at that ass, it jiggles everywhere. And three, thank God that after this, we'll be able to find something more valuable to beat their asses with. Now, for some tips for those mad enough to attempt this yourself, stick to his flank, if you can, for the best windows to dodge attacks. If you have him take out the pillars and stick close to where they used to be, not everyone knows this, but if his weapon hits the roof on a swing, it'll stun him for a second or two, letting you punish for a few swings of your own. And you're going to want to take advantage of that because you're gonna be here a while this fucker has over a thousand hp and your fist those tiny little nubs at the end of your arms yeah they do a whopping two damage to him on each regular attack one damage on a left-handed jab and two and a half damage on a heavy attack so we're looking at over 500 hits to bring him down just once all while dodging his big slams and swipes. Another tip is if he gets too close to either end wall, lure him away. The last thing you need to do is fight the camera. 
ammo while you're fighting the boss as well. With the walking jello pile defeated, the rest of the asylum is pretty simple and easy. We don't really run into any real problems. I fist a few hollows to see how much damage I'm doing to things that aren't bosses and well, it's not good. A backstab does 9 damage and a parry does 10. So yeah, we're gonna run to Oscar, grab our flask and key, and dip the fuck out grabbing every last piece of loot we can on our way out. Now let's meet with the biggest bird there ever is, and hope we don't look like a tasty worm for its babies. Now that we've escaped the Chinese gulag and lowered our social credit score, we're going to take some time to loot the surrounding ruins, and then quest towards our first weapon and the only one we're going to have for a good while. But before we do that, we grab ourselves some goodies to make our life easier. First we sneak our ass into the new Londo ruins, grabbing everything we see, and especially those transient curses, as we're going to need them to fist their ghostly asses later. We're here to grab that sweet, sweet fire keeper soul however so duck to the right across the bridge head across the narrow walkway slip past the ghost like a florida man covered in lube running from the cops grab that soul homeward bone home and it's time to take that master key we're gonna pop open the valley of the drakes head down the blight town once we're in don't get smacked by a shirtless redneck with a big stick and hit with poison like i did it's gonna make this next bit harder but we definitely want to run down here, slip past all the blow dart assholes, fall on the dogs, and grab that sweet second firekeeper soul. This is not what happens. We get hit by poison, and then we're hit by toxin, so now we're dying even quicker. Slip, land on the dog, just barely grab the soul, and then get our ass eaten more than a twink at a furry convention. Now we're back at the firelink shrine, head to the firekeeper, get your Estus flask up to plus two, let's head back into the valley. We're going to need that flask. Flask. I run along the valley, fuck up remembering which items don't wake the dragon, accidentally wake said dragon making it less safe to run through here later, which is relevant as we attempt to slip past the upcoming drake. We proceed to fuck this up by getting caught on the hitbox twice. And then we're sent sliding downwards in the valley faster than a Californian on a drug spiral. Let's go! Third time's the charm, however, and we slip past and make it into the dark root basin. Light the fire to save our progress, then haul our ass up the hill. Stopping only long enough to punch a crystal lizard so hard we send his ass straight into the back rooms, where he promptly dies 15 seconds later, giving us that sweet, sweet loot. Run on past the walking bushes, cause they are way too mighty for our sad little fist at the moment. We slip past the titanite demon to meet our savior Andre. For a pitiful 200 souls, we could buy our first weapon from him, the Seistus. Don't get your hopes up too much though, this isn't going to be a super powerful weapon. Even once we get it up to plus 5, we're barely going to be able to punch things to death. But hey, it's still 10 times better than our bare hands, so it's an improvement. Once we have our weapons, time to spend all our souls and grind to crank this baby up to plus 5. It's also at this point that I toss the target shield in the trash, as I realize it's just as good as parrying as my bare hands. First we'll pop open the firelink shortcut, then we'll struggle to fight the Baronite Knight. We still get him though, as a plus 3 fist only does 16 or so damage a swing, but that's still 8 times better than our bare hands. We also managed to get a few lucky Titanite drops from enemies, cutting our grind nicely, and now we can really start punching things, but don't get too hopeful. As even at a plus 5, we do a whopping 51 damage to a basic hollow. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those runs. With our weapon secure, it's time to do some prep work. Given that fist weapons typically scale with strength, we're gonna need to gather as much souls as we can reasonably can before fighting an actual threat. My first thought was, hey, let's go kill the moonlight butterfly for easy souls. 
Yeah, that didn't go well. After fisting many a bush in the gardens, we make it to the butterfly to do a whopping 20 ish damage a swing. And given that we have to outlast a variety of magic blasts before the flying fuck will land and let us do 1 to 2 bars of damage with our meager fist, this did not go well. So we double back to the parish and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks. 1. Lure this asshole beyond the pig, beyond the gate, and beat him dead. Once he's dead he won't respawn, and more importantly, he won't be able to lock the gate on you. Now I'm pretty sure everyone knows that one though. So now we go up, fist everything to death, grab these skulls, Toss them on the fire. Boom, barbecued pork for everyone. Now that the piggy's out of the way, run on down. We're gonna show off a few cool things in this area. But first, run past the brats. Careful not to get poisoned. Run outside and reload the area to lose their aggro because fighting three rats with only your fist on a narrow walkway sucks ass. Sneak up behind the hollow and beat his ass. Now we can open the shortcut to the undead burg ladder. And more importantly, we can run across the top of the bridge with minimal hassle, as we don't have a big fuck up hellkite drake in our way. Only a few hollows. Now run to the sunlight bonfire, pop the gate open, now we have a permanent shortcut on the top of the bridge open. Now head to the other end, talk to Solaire for that sweet, sweet, friendly NPC, unlock the lower berg, then run down the stairs and open the other shortcut. Now boom, all the berg is open to us from various angles without triggering the dragon. Only one shortcut to go in this area. But now begins the grind. Given we can't have armor, HP and strength are going to be our best friend. And thankfully, because fist weapons are light, we don't have to worry about carry weight at all. We clear out the burg, get all of our loot, parry a black knight to death, bully him all the way, buy out the undead merchant, not murder him for once, as we can't use his uchi katana anyways. The tourist boss goes about the way it normally does, scale up to the top, beat up the guards, lure him out, lightning plunge on his head, and wail on him until he dies. Even with how weak a plus 5 Sextus is, adding lightning makes it still strong enough to handle Taurus. We head back to the merchant, buy the key to the houses, and then we head back down to the burg, free a sorcerer who somehow manages to lock himself inside of a house, then we head inwards to reenact London and die of knife crime. Shanks a lot, you assholes. We try this a few more times before I say fuck it because those bastards inflict blood loss in one single swing. So if you get hit, you're really gonna hurt. And I decide, you know what I really need? More sips. It's time for a diversion. Now before we head to the catacombs to get the right of kindling, I first make a detour down the elevator, onto the rampart, grab the key off this roof, head up to the bird, and we make like an egg. That being we scramble out of here and back to where we started the game. We take a quick sit at the bonfire, parry and bully Oscar to death, even if he hits hard he can still be parried into the ground as well as fisted with a good old backstab. Take him out, all the hollows in our way, and we grab our rusty iron rings. Hope you got your tetanus shot up to date, but this baby will be useful for later in the run. Ring in hand, we head downwards to bully yet another black knight and steal a weird voodoo doll. We fuck up our bullying attempt, almost perfectly parrying him, only to fuck it up at the last moment. Come back down, almost repeat the same mistake, but still parry and we finally wail on him. He's a tough son of a bitch, but my fist is tougher. Once this is done, we flee back out of the asylum, we egg the bird onwards to get us out of this shithole. If you thought I was fighting the stray demon with a plus five sastis when regular enemies can nearly one shot me, you're out your gourd. With the loot acquired, we head down the pin down pinwheel. So we head through the graveyard and down into the bone zone. <laughs> I hope you've got your calcium supplements ready because it's all skeletons all the time. We head into the Necro Dreeb's cave, ruin his LARPing session by calling him a stupid nerd, and we beat the neckbeard to death. Get lucky the skeletons didn't follow me in. We open the door and light the fire. We die more to gravity than pinwheel, but I'm ashamed to admit he did get me twice. Both times I just got spammed to death with magic. Now normally this isn't a problem given, you know, we'd have clothing that isn't our beef jerky flesh, but today we're not a glass cannon. We're essentially a glass BB gun. We're just as fragile as a glass cannon, but without any of the hitting power. Hell, it takes two or three hits just to take one life bar segment from Pinwheel. So the name of the game becomes Clone Management. This is one of the few times you have to run around and despawn the clones and keep the number down one to three. Or else you're gonna become a well done steak. 
Still, after the third attempt, we've got the right of kindling in our hands, and we're ready to escape back to the light of the day. Also, one funny moment is while I was getting down there, I fall to my death, but I accidentally plunge attack and kill one of those accursed bone wheel skeletons. Serves you right, you bony fuck. I'd also recommend you kindle the bonfire if you can afford it. And you're likely going to use a flask or two getting down here. Especially if you get unlucky like me and catch a bone wheel skeleton in the back. Homeward bone back to the bonfire, flee the catacombs, get stuck between two skeletons, and fall to my death. At least the bone lords go with me. Second time we manage to lure them all out of the way and book it out of here. Not to be seen until it's time to head back for Nido. With our journey back to Firelink complete and all the souls from pinwheel dumped into HP, it's time to head to the gargoyles. But that will be a fight for another day. I hope you enjoyed this new type of content from me. Stick around and sub for more if you'd like to see this in the future. If you don't mind, please support the channel with a like and tell me how I'm doing. I'd appreciate the feedback. If you'd like to support the channel more, you can support the content by becoming a channel member or a patron and get your name listed on the screen, as well as other benefits such as voting for our weekly member chosen streamed game. I'd also like to thank Kato Phoenix for the lovely artwork. I'd also like to tell y'all to check out my archive channel. All footage of this run will be going up there as proof of the challenge. And I do hit the Asylum Demon with a broken sword in one attempt to test damage, but I then have the demon immediately kill me, so it's all kosher. Also, if you have any suggestions for challenge runs you'd like to see after this one is complete, then feel free to suggest them in the comments. This has been Core, and I'll see you all next time. Stay safe out there, 